Hi, I'm Mitch Shoemaker and today is day 21 of my doing 100 days of YouTube videos and focusing on my writing. So yay, I made it to day 21. Um, <laughs> been a long day. Um, I was kind of hoping that I would get to where I was doing my writing first and then I got up today and I was like, okay, this just isn't working out for me. So I'm just going to start trying to go to work first and do my writing after work because that's what I seem to keep doing. <laughs> I'll just have to go to work earlier. And then that didn't work out for me today either. And then when I was reading my scriptures and meditationals, I started getting all these ideas for what to do with my books. So I started just jotting down notes for what I needed to work on when I got to my books tonight because I needed to go to work. And so, yeah, <laughs> my writing is kind of all over the place, just like myself. And it was kind of interesting tonight because I was working on... Um, recognizing God's hand in my life and kind of saw it again today because I was writing about my grandpa and um, him telling me that my sleep was more important than the activities and things that I wanted to do. So he wasn't going to wake me up to go do something I wanted to do because I needed to sleep. And, <laughs> and of course, here I am like depriving myself of sleep. And I was like, wow, when I was really little, my grandpa was trying to teach me how to take care of myself and what was important and what wasn't. And I've completely forgotten all those things, and now I need to relearn them. But it's kind of interesting that by writing about it, it's kind of, I'm remembering things that I was taught or started to be taught or <laughs> the idea of. It wasn't a consistent thing throughout my life. It definitely wasn't something that um, my parents were good at doing, my biological parents anyway. Um, so it's something that I've had to learn, and I haven't been very good at it. Which is why I keep trying to tell myself I need to be on a schedule because I think if I can stick to a schedule, a certain time to go to bed, a certain time to get up, and even if it's you know a little bit flexible, if I don't do everything 100%, whatever, um, I can at least do part of it somewhere in there, you know, just the, the gist of it, the idea that it starts here and ends here, and this is how my day is supposed to go. And then, of course, you know, some things I can take less time at or more time at, and I would really like more time with my writing, and I basically had like less than an hour today or an hour. I spend an hour, like half an hour reading something on Lenoia and just keep changing the same things over and over again, going back and forth, and I'm like, ah, oh, frustrated with myself on that, because I'm like, I changed it to try to like make my friend happy. I'm like, I'm not doing this to make my friend happy. I'm changing it back, and I just keep going back and forth on that one debating whether or not to do a prologue for that story. I have an idea for the prologue for that story, and part of me is like, no, I don't want to do it. But I had just not just the one friend that was asking about a backstory, but someone else that read it, and she was like um, curious what happened to the Lenoya's parents. And I'm like, she's an orphan. I don't care. <laughs> like, she's an orphan. <laughs> she doesn't know what happened to her parents. Um but, I mean, I guess I could do a prologue and tell everybody what happened to her parents. Take the fun out of that. Um, I don't know. I haven't decided on that one. I may or may not do that. I have an idea for it, but I'm, I'm still debating whether or not I'll do it. I'm thinking I can take the ideas for the prologue and just kind of um, mention them. Not exactly as backstory for Lenoya because she wouldn't really remember, but just commentary from other characters, like, around her that just kind of, like, indicate what her life is like as she goes back and forth or something. I don't know. Anyway, <laughs> so I don't have to write my prologue. Or I might write it at the end of the book. I don't know. I'm still debating that. I need to get through revising it first, but I've kind of decided today, and of course I may change my mind again tomorrow or some other day, that since the two books that are closest to being published right now are God's Hand in My Recognizing God's Hand in My Life and Lenoya and the Teachers of Powers, I want to try to go through and revise them, rewrite them, whatever I need to do with those two books. Just focus on those two for right now and see if I can't get through them, which it would be nice if I had like at least an hour a day on each of them or I could go through at least a chapter a day on each of them. And <laughs> I didn't really get through my second chapter revisions. And then I'm looking at it, I was like, ah, I've got all this information for like a whole other chapter, a whole other place. I'm like, this isn't making sense. This isn't, I need to do something different. So, um... I'm trying to still figure out, like, recognizing God's hand in my life. I'm like, yes, I'm telling my life story, kind of. Um, but as I'm doing it, it's just like, uh, this isn't really getting to, <laughs> this isn't getting to what I'm wanting to, the point that I'm wanting to get to. So 
But I, I don't know. I feel like it's still important in my life to recognize things like that. So I pointed out in my story, um, my lack of trust at a very young age, not understanding trust, um, not understanding that sleep was more important <laughs> than you know doing stuff with other people. Um, just things like that um, that I didn't know, didn't understand that I was someone was trying to teach me, but it wasn't a consistent thing. So um, I'm not really remembering the exact ages of everything because I just remember that I was little. So <laughs> it's kind of a kind of an interesting thing. And then lots of other things that are popping into my head as far as timeline stuff that goes. And I'm like, do I need to put it in the order of the timeline? Because at first I was thinking timeline. And then, I, well, actually, when I first did it, I was just whatever I remembered that led to something else. And you know how it was just one thing leads to something else. And then you've got a whole strain of this and then a whole strain of something else and a whole strain of something else. And so I'm trying to go back and just put all the the same stuff together. So then I'm trying to debate at this point, do I try to do it as a timeline and actually go back and organize it to, to when the events happened in my life? Or do I stick with leaving it as my little strain, like this connects to this, this connects to this, this connects to this. And that's all out of order age-wise as far as what happened in my actual life. Because um, that's, that's kind of, um, I don't know. Because a lot of those different things, they tie in in different ways and different things. And so it's kind of like, I want to explain what happened with my grandpa. But in order to do that, I kind of have to explain the story, why my connection to him. Um, anyway, sorry. <laughs> get emotional. All this stuff I get emotional about. And I was thinking yesterday and today um, that I do get emotional. But... Um, all of the emotions, the feelings and stuff that I feel, they're, they're lessened. It gets easier when I actually share them, I express them. Um, and some things like grief, loss of loved ones. Um, I don't think that pain ever 100% goes away. Um, but I think I get way more emotional right now because I'm just trying to re remember all of those things. So it's bringing up all of those memories all at once. And then I'm just really missing my grandpa and I'm missing sleep. So lack of sleep makes me really emotional too. <laughs> so not a good thing. But I was also realizing that um, when I'm really anxious or nervous or whatever, that if I actually just plow through and do whatever the stuff is that I'm avoiding, then that anxiety will actually like lessen. It, it goes away and I'm like, oh, look, I did it. And then I'm not avoiding it. And then I don't need to play my games. And then I don't need to watch TV. And then I don't need to do all this other stuff. And then I actually have time to sleep and wouldn't that be nice? So <laughs> I have all the concepts in my head. I understand the concept. It's the application that I am struggling with profusely. <laughs> it is, it's like it's eluded me entirely. And then I'm like, hey, I give up. I'm just going to go with whatever I usually do because fighting myself does not work. And so then I just kind of like, hey, I'm just going to try it differently and just accept that I'm going to do my writing after work. And then I get all these ideas for my writing before work. And I was like, and then part of me was like, it's so late. I'm like, can I just count the ideas that I wrote down as my writing for today? I thought about it, but then I still decided I wanted to actually do some work in my book. So like I said, I did a little bit, a little bit, a little bit. Did probably did more reading than I did typing, just trying to figure out where my stuff is and getting my thoughts organized. And then as I'm getting close to getting my thoughts organized, I'm like, and eh, now I'm going to bed. So I don't have to deal with the, all the emotional stuff coming up right now because I got to get up early and I'm going to bed way too late. And that's the story of my life right now. <laughs> I just avoid sleep for whatever reason. And then I just make myself tired. It's an excuse. It's an ongoing excuse. It's my default setting that needs to be uprooted and removed so that I can let myself relax and sleep and stop avoiding things. And I know if I would stick to a schedule and do things in a certain time frame, um, and I know everything always takes longer than I think that it will, which is why I'm like, I'm only getting like half an hour in my books in each one of them for like an hour because that's the only time I have left. Um, but if I would actually do it before, like if I would get up when I want to, like at 10 or 11, and then I have like two or three hours, I can spend like an hour and a half on each book and I can still go to work and I can still do stuff and then I can still go to work and then I can come home and write in my journal, get something to eat, write in my journal and go to bed. And then I can still go to bed at a decent hour so that I can get up and still have that, you know, five hours, you know, that I can spend two to three hours on my writing. 
that's the idea, that's the ideal, but sometimes the ideal is very elusive. <laughs> in my case, it's very elusive. <laughs> but I feel like that's been the story of my life. Like, I just, it's always the fantasy and it's never attainable. And yet somehow doing my gratitude list and working on my books, some of those unattainable things are starting to feel like they might be attainable if, as long as I don't give up, as long as I keep trying. And so there's this part of me that just thinks, okay, if I keep pushing through this, if I keep working at this, eventually I'm going to figure out this schedule thing. <laughs> eventually it will actually work and things will start to fall into place and I will stop fighting myself. I will stop running from it and it will start getting done and it will be amazing. Um, but it's not going to be an easy process and it is a process and it's going to take time. And it's going to probably be very emotional, bumpy ride. But I'm grateful I don't have to go through this alone. I'm grateful for the people that are supporting me and loving me through this process. I'm grateful to know that um, God is guiding me through all of this so that I don't have to do it alone, so that I at least have some kind of direction or ideas. I am still not the best at following through on those direction and ideas, but at least they're there. I know they're there. And I'm grateful that God is very loving and very patient and he's i think i get more frustrated with myself than he does and he's just like okay midge whenever you're ready we can do this it'll be okay this is what you need to do just figure it out and i'm like i'm trying i'm trying and then i got people like my friend and my best friend like oh you're doing this you're doing this and i'm like i don't feel like i'm doing it yet but i know i'm making progress i know things are changing and i know they're going to continue to change and eventually it will get better and hopefully easier. I don't know, but maybe I'll get a little bit more consistent and even getting consistent will probably help me. If nothing else, I will get a little more sleep and I will be a little less emotional and that will be nicer. Um, but I'm still gonna have to deal with all of my emotions. I'm still gonna have to work through all of them as I do my writing. And I realize that that's not something that's gonna just totally happen in a hundred days. I will still have emotional things and probably background trauma stuff that's going to come up possibly the rest of my life. Hopefully not, but it's, I have tons more stories to write that are definitely not getting written in a hundred days, especially if I can't even figure out the ones I've got in the next hundred days. So I'm trying, I'm working on it. Progress, not perfection. Love that for my 12 step program. Just grateful for those little reminders. Grateful I can still say stuff about my gratitudes. I want to be able to continue the gratitudes because I think it's helping me to at least recognize when I'm in like an emotional fog or an emotional whirlwind that I don't know what to do with. Um, but at least I can find some peace in the middle of all of that chaos because of my gratitudes, because I can change my focus to gratitude, which I'm really grateful for because it just flips my mind from that negative. So it's like, okay. And it flips the that thought to like, I can't do it till I can do it. So today I was like, I had a bunch of stuff on my list. And I'm like, I can do all of it. I'm like, I'm Wonder Woman. I'm going to do all of this tonight. <laughs> and then as I got towards the end of my night, I'm like, I'm not doing all this tonight. And then I'm thinking in the back of my head, but you could do it. You could do it. And I'm like, anything's possible with God's help. And I'm like, okay, I know I could do all of these things. But if I do all of these things, I will be up all night and I will not get any sleep before I have to go do stuff. <laughs> <laughs> in the morning and that is not okay I need to take care of myself to some extent I need to get some sleep so that I can function and I'm still going to bed about the same time I figured I would as if I did all of those other things on my to-do list and I was like and now I'm very grateful I chose not to do them because <laughs> I would still not be to where I was writing right now if I'd done the other things on my to-do list and it's okay because they will still be there tomorrow and however long it takes me to do all of them. And and that's okay. And I'm grateful to know that it's okay, that I'm not a horrible person for not finishing them. I'm not even thinking that way anymore, which is just amazing to me that I'm just like, okay, my day's just not working out or I just like got a little carried away um, and it'll just be there tomorrow and it's okay. And I'm just grateful that God is helping me see that it's, it's okay and I don't have to stress about it. I don't have to freak out about it. I don't have to be overwhelmed by it. I could just be like, all right, this is where I'm at. <laughs> and hopefully at some point I will get myself sorted out and things will work out the way that they're supposed to. Um, maybe Wednesday, I think I'll flip my schedule a little bit. 
kind of have to because my writing group is Wednesday night. So I kind of have to do my writing before my writing group and then go to my writing group and then go to work because otherwise I will not get any sleep. Either that or I have to try to go to work before my writing group, but I'm pretty sure I'm not going to be awake to do that. <laughs> so <laughs> going to have to do my writing before my writing group. So, And then maybe I can kind of keep myself on that schedule for the weekend and that would be really good. Um, but we'll see. Like I said, it's I'm a work in progress. I keep trying. It's the idea. Some days I do better than others. And maybe one of these days I'll actually get it right the way that I want it to be. And then we'll see what happens from there. <laughs> I think once I do it one day, I'm like, okay, I did it one day. I can do it another day. And it'll just start progressing from there, I hope. Um, but anyway, that's as far as I've gotten on my writing. And I'm grateful that I could kind of be reminded just from memories that are triggered by my writing <laughs> that I need to take care of myself and that my sleep is more important than other things, including my writing that I wanted to do right now. So that was kind of what I needed to read to, to be like, okay, it's time to go to bed. So I'm grateful for that. And I'm grateful I could still do this video tonight. And I hope you have a great day full of gratitude.